What is going on guys? So today I bring to you a new video, a new channel, and new topics. This is going to be the engineering channel where I will do anything 3D printing, engineering. From now on, I'll leave the Canon video. If you guys haven't seen the 3D printed Canon video, make sure you check that out on Beyond Tinted. But from now on, beyond the behind the tent is going to be everything engineering related because I kind of want to keep the car stuff on one side and keep the other stuff on the other. Let me see. I have to play the camera setting here a second. All right, it's a bit. It's cloudy but sunny, if you know what I mean. But so with that being said, let's get to the video. This one, if you clicked, obviously you know it's going to be about be about a 3D printed Pelton wheel. This is one of those 350 watt permanent magnet motors. This, this one's a free energy TM 12 volt slash 24 volt DC permanent magnet motor generator. So, but they're advertised as the scooter motors and as plenty of other things, the, the 350 watt, 250 watt, they spin pretty freely. So that will be good for this, for this one, but we'll have to see. A lot of these parts in the video, um, I found on Thingiverse, I will link them in the description below. And if you guys need the parts or want the parts that I made uh, to, in conjunction with these, let me know. I can post them on Thingiverse. I'm sure it can't be too difficult to figure out. So let me know. Like this stand, there's no stand for one of these on Thingiverse. I just I drew it up in CAD, 3D printed it, and here we are. But, and also the other part is the, the, the way this wheel mounts is an adapter that I printed up. I, I can put that on Thingiverse too. Uh, it's on SolidWorks. I can include SolidWorks files for people who have that and want to edit them. But I just took this wheel, printed it, and then used their dimensions to build what I needed. So if you look, this little hub adapter on the inside, where it gets thinner, this is actually an adapter that I printed so it can screw on, and you can see on this side. But what it is, is it's a little plate, but it has a slight angle. So as it goes in, it puts pressure on this other piece. Because when you split this wheel in half, you can see it's two halves connected. When you split it in half, it doesn't have mounting holes on the one half because I didn't make it. So I don't, I don't know why someone would make that like that, but whatever their reason is, I'm sure it's probably a decent one. But I printed up an adapter and the only thing holding it is three screws that are not spaced equally, as you can tell. I don't know why, I probably should have at least put four. But this is just gonna be a quick garden hose test. I just wanna make sure the proof of concept is there because a normal garden hose is about 50 PSI, and this test isn't gonna be nowhere near that with one 25 or maybe 50 foot length of garden hose. So, with that being said, we're just gonna do a little test with the nozzle, which is right here. This is also 3D printed on Thingiverse. I will try and link everything below, like I said. If I forget, just comment below. I'll get them up there, don't worry. So let me show you some other parts. And I don't know if you guys have ever heard, but there's a, it's called a Coanda screen. And what it does is it's a very good way of getting water into something, but not anything else because of the cracks. It's little triangles and they're put in here at I think at like a three degree angle. This is also on Thingiverse. What I found is, and this is actually what messed me up, I print these end blocks. You just print all these 16 little triangles out and then the two end blocks. I printed these at 100, or I printed some at 100, and then I printed two more at 105 because I had, I had to beat these things in here with a hammer when I didn't use the 105, but just this piece at 105 and these at 100% size. So they fit better, and I mean, I don't have any of the, just another piece that you put here to keep it together. On my printer, at least, 105% on a uh, 0.6 nozzle, I found that it just, it fits snug. So I don't really have to deal deal with it because I'm putting the screws in, it'll be held down, I'm not that worried. But water will flow, if you put it the wrong way, water will just roll off it like a waterfall. You gotta make sure you put it the right direction. But so, I decided to design a box to capture this water. Just to put like, you know, if you have a stream or somewhere, you can just set it up, put this in the water, it has, it has a five degree angle downslope. And then the original design was to fit four of these screens, which is overkill, way, way overkill. For one of these screens would probably take enough for the garden hose. But so I decided to make it four in case I decide to put bigger nozzles, whatever it is. If you guys want a smaller one, I can change it up, make a smaller one real quick. Not a big deal. 
or with a smaller printer. Some of these parts like this might not fit on normal printers. I am printing with an Anycubic Chiron, so it is a little bit bigger. But, so when I decided, when I made it 105, I didn't add that length in, so I can't fit four of them. To make this a better solution, and don't worry, it'll be not ugly on the inside one. If I release a model, I'll make yours pretty. I made a little plate that goes like this, has the fins that drops into here. Got a nice little cover now. Slide it down. There you go. And then now you can put your plate in upside down. Oh my gosh. That's okay, I'm not screwing it. But, so then you can put the plate in and then have just a little section right here and water will jump off the end of it. So don't worry, that'll be all tucked in there nice nice and snug. And I made it so it comes over right at the right angle. So there. And then on this side, threads. And I think this was also a thingiverse. I don't think I made this one. It's currently now stuck in here too. Oh my god. I shouldn't have taken it out, honestly. Oh my gosh. But if you guys need one, a male, two male, garden hose adapter plug. The camera is focusing pretty decently. I probably shouldn't jinx it. But I think what we're going to do is not test this. This I'm going to test and post that video hopefully this weekend. I don't know if this video is even going to make it up today. But I'm going to try and edit and get this video up. Because this Friday I'm going to go try and test this the garden hose and everything combined. But I also have to make a plate to put the nozzle in the right spot. I don't wanna to have to hold it. I just wanna be able to put this box at the top of a waterfall, stream, wherever you have flowing water that can run over it. And then run the garden hose down the hill, obviously, and hopefully gain enough pressure. The thing is a garden hose is at about 50 PSI, give or take. And this waterfall with the hose is not gonna be anywhere near that. I have every two point, I think like three feet you go down, that's one PSI and that's with one um, square inch column of water. So garden hose isn't one square inch. So there's a lot of things that will come into play. That's why this is all gonna go on a separate channel to be particular this channel behind the tent. And if you guys like it, make sure to subscribe, check out the video. But all right, let's go test this in some manner. I'll see you guys over there. All right guys, for starters, oh, this is the hose. This is it on, this hose on like least pressure. This is like eight foot. This thing has a perfect stream for this application. I mean, it's really not crazy. I'll show you guys in a minute when I turn it up, but I just wanna show you guys that. Let's see if we can get this video. for a splash guard because I am absolutely soaked from that like had to pick up the camera dripping so I'm gonna make a splash guard I think we proved that the concept works with enough pressure so now that I'm completely soaked we proved that it works I'm gonna make a splash guard and I will be back whenever I'm back what is going on guys it is actually the next day between class homework other things printing I had to do it the next day. I didn't feel like making the video last night, but here we go. So, as you guys saw it yesterday, it was just the stand and then the motor on there and the Pelton wheel. Now there's this little black plate that you can see comes up and it just goes in there. And then I just made a simple little ring, which will sit right here and cover it. So it could have been a little longer. If I measured it, probably would have been right, but whatever. If it covers most of the water and I don't get splashed in the face while testing this, it's a good day. So I'm gonna mount this on here and I made it so you can just kinda probably mount it like right here. I, I actually designed this to have where these holes are. There were six mounting holes so you could just choose a spot. But for some reason, I don't know if the print bed wasn't hot enough or it was some weird stuff, but I could not, it just kept failing. It would rip the entire print off the, um, print service every time I try. I tried three times to get it to print, removed the holes, slowed it down, tried everything, just wouldn't work. Printed these holes fine, so I don't know. 
I don't know. It doesn't do holes. I guess it didn't do amazing. But the holes there, it is good enough. That one just missed a layer or two on the outside. I don't know. But basically, Pelton wheel is done. Or the the cover is. So I will see you guys at the next test. I just wanted to give you guys a little update and make sure to check out the non-engineering channel, Beyond Tinted. But from now on, as I said in the beginning, everything is going to be, everything engineering will be printed on here. And trust me, there's a lot. There's these, don't, I shot a video a while ago. It's technically supposed to be a torpedo that I made that you can put a model rocket in, but I decided to test it outside. Lots of videos, lots of videos to come. I will see you guys, stay tuned. <laughs> it's still spraying me right in the face. Definitely a lot better though. All right, let me go crank the power up and see, see what it can do. Say it works. Alright guys, that was testing best case scenario. I think that's gonna conclude for this one. Check out part two when I test with the actual power of water and not a fo uh faucet. I was gonna say a faucet hose, but yeah, check that guy, check that out. It will be up soon. I think I'm gonna test this weekend. I'm curious to see if it'll actually spin and produce power from just gravity, not from the pressure in the water mains. So we'll find out. Stay tuned. Subscribe for more. Peace out, guys.